Columbus, Kentucky. Yeah, that's the first I can remember. I was five years old there, and my father was a third brick operator. And my brother, John, it was a year old, and he had diphtheria. And I can remember sleeping downstairs in the waiting room next to my dad's office. They fixed me a, a place to sleep on the, on the bench there in the waiting room. And I remember chasing order hoops when he handed up the old wooden order hook with a closed pin that built the train orders. Then the, whoever caught the train crew caught the, they would throw it off down the track and I'd go get it for him. How old were you when you did all that? Five years. Oh, really? Was, yeah, between five and six years old. Just a young kid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I can vaguely remember it. Uh, what was your first memory of actually, um, maybe not working on the railroad, but you said your dad was a, um, a dispatcher? Uh, what was that called, his job? He was an agent and operator. Agent and operator. Him being an agent and operator, were you free to ride back and forth between stations if you wanted to? Uh, well, yeah, he had a family pass. Mm -hmm. We could ride the passenger trains free. I can re remember catching a, this this little train when we lived we lived at uh, Sal Tello, and we would mother would take me and uh, my brother, and we'd go to Oklahoma, Mississippi, and we'd get off and it had a big depot there in the waiting room. They always had a fire in the coal, coal stove. And uh, I don't remember just what time, but there was a bus had wheels on it, would back up there. We'd get on it, and there was a little branch line that ran from Oklahoma to Calhoun City, Mississippi. And my grandparents lived at, Dur lived at Derma, Mississippi, just this side of Calhoun City. And my grandfather would always pick us up in a wagon, a team of mules. Really? Go about a mile or so to where they lived. You say it was a branch line, it just ended in that town? Yep. For a long time, there's a park in Oklahoma, and you could see the old road bed where it went by across there. But I don't think you can see any signs of it now. It's all gone. What what industry was in that town that your grandparents in? Surely it wasn't just a passenger train going there. Yeah, that was a logging road, and and they they haul freight. I mean, like. Uh, but they hauled timber out. It was a yeah. branch to get timber into all the only cotton and. Uh, food stuff like uh, salt pork and they'd have a local freight to run out there and deliver to all the little places. When you were with your grandparents, what would you do there? Oh, with my grandparents? You said he would pick you up in a team of mules. I didn't know what you would do for Were you just there for recreation or what did you do? <coughs> oh, man. that's all the transportation they had, man. <coughs> Oh, we we'd normally stay a week when we'd go to see them, and uh, uh, I'd help them pick cotton or whatever. Always ride the mule. They had two mules, Sam and Kate. But back to railroading, I I went to work in 1943, May the 11th. Well, you said uh, you would go to your grandparents, but uh, around five or six, what did you do in your early teens as far as the railroad went? I mean, did, what did you do to help your dad when you were that old? Oh, uh, well, I started school at South Tullamore, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. 
and Dad got uh, two cents a bale for loading cotton. Well, he, he could contract it out. Of course, he needed the money. I think his job only paid $65 a month. That was during Depression, which was a good job and a good salary. But he would load all the cotton into boxcars. And I'd get home from school, I'd hip him, load, push it over on the two-wheel truck that he pushed it into the cars. And a Saturday, I got a dime, 10 cents, for helping him all the week load that cotton. Really? It took a whole week to fill the box car up? Oh, no. I'm sorry. No, they move them every day. I mean, oh, okay. he'd load five or six cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A day. In addition to his, his regular buyers, duties. Had a big cotton platform there with a roof uh -huh. on it. Uh-huh. And when they ginned the cotton, they'd bring it down there and put it on the platform. And there's two cotton buyers in Sal Tillo, Mr. John W. Wilson and uh, Mr. Jones. And, and they they were cotton buyers. They'd buy it and then they'd send it to the... To the... Plants that made the fabric. Yeah. Okay. Well, like like Bemis, the Bemis Mill. Uh, no. Uh, I don't mean they would send it to the Bemis Mill, but they'd send it to a plant like that textile plant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you got 10 cents. I got to ask, what year was that? Well, I was uh, just an estimate. Six or piece. seven years old, and so I'm 25. I'd be 30. Helping him load. 31 or two. Helping him load cotton when you were six or seven. Is that what you said? Well, actually, I I was helping push him oh. over on the yeah. truck. Oh, okay. Helping I call him. myself helping him, but yeah. I, I wasn't doing much. <laughs> but he gave you a dime. Oh, yeah. And what could a dime get you in 1931, 32? Oh, my gosh. That you remember? Well, you could get a half a dozen bananas, and, and a, what I what it was really a treat for me, I'd get about a half a dozen bananas and a, these two snowballs in a pack, cake. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Had them back then. And... You could buy quite a bit for that. And sixty-five dollars a month was his salary, in addition to the oh, work yeah. he did. I've got some checks right here, check stubs that I had when I went to work in nineteen forty-three. Mm -hmm. uh, Sixty. Fifty and sixty. So, <clears throat> you're seven, eight. You said you were helping your dad put the cotton on his. On the, I guess the wheel truck to get it on the box car, I gave you a dime. Mm -hmm. um, you were obviously going to school during all this time, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. what, what did you spend most of your time doing when you weren't in school? Did you spend it with your dad a lot down at the depot or what? Oh, yeah, I played around the depot. What, what were his hours of work? What time did he usually get in and get off? He, he worked from 8 to 5. Baker's hours, yeah. almost. And, he, and we lived right across the track. Mm-hmm. Of course, he could come across the track and eat lunch. And How big was the depot, size-wise? Pretty big depot. Pretty big depot, big freight room. They used to stop there. The local would stop, had a merchandise car, mm -hmm. sometimes two merchandise cars. Of course, a brakeman would unload the freight onto the platform. And we had a drayman, my oldest sister, husband's father was a drayman there. He owned a lumber company there, and he owned a... I wish I had a picture of the truck that he used. It didn't have air in the tire. It had thick rubber on the wheel about this. Uh -huh. And it wasn't a cab on the truck. It was just the, a seat to sit in. Just a motorized carriage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and then just a platform. And he hauled all the freight to the stores uptown. So, so the merchandise cars were the cars that would they would drop off? No, no. They would stop and unload them. Conductor had the way bills, and they had on there who the what come off at Southella, Ryan C, and uh, Baldwin, Boonville, and they would it, just to, everything barrels of flour, even bales of cotton. Everything that would be delivered by truck, obviously, and you said this before, was dropped off through the merchandise cars. Yeah. 
And, and and you said that the drayman, who was responsible for unloading the car? The the uh, conductor and brakeman. They would have to come and, unload it. Yeah, the conductor would have the way built, and he'd uh -huh. know what come out, and okay. he'd tell them all. A lot of times, bring it to the door, and and they put it on the shoulder and take it over and drop and, it off. Yeah. Now and, and now the drayman, he was the one driving that motorized carriage. Is that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and a drayman was just like a delivery man. Yeah. Yeah. He, okay. He got he got so much. I I believe the railroad company paid him to deliver. deliver. It. Yeah. That he makes sense. So much. You just don't hear the term Draymond used anymore, so I wanted to make sure and get across what they did. Yeah. Because um, I think Draymond, I think like dredging, but anyways. So um, you would spend you so you spent a lot of your teenage years playing there at the depot, right? Yeah. Did anything out of the ordinary, anything exciting that you remember happening at the depot during that time? Surely there was something. Well, I can remember the kid. Uh, number 16 passenger train. At that time, he ran through South Hill about 9 o'clock at night, coming north. And he hit a car on the Main Street crossing right there by the depot. And uh, I think there's five people that got killed before he got stopped. And it, it was a steam engine. There were five people in the car that died? Five, yeah. Okay. Would well, kill everybody in the car. Five people, and I can remember them bringing them and laying them on the platform, all the bodies, wow. before they picked them up. So that wasn't far from the depot, the, where the accident happened. Well, it was yeah, right at the depot. Oh. The depot was like here, and and a few about a, maybe a hundred yards at the Across Main it. Street crossing, which wow. is still there, but the old depot was gone. And, so, but I guess because it was it was lit, they could see everything better at the depot, right? How fast do you think he was going when he came through there? I mean, that he wasn't stopping there. Obviously, he was just going north. No, right? they, it wasn't a stop. And, no.